Hey guys, what's up? I'm getting ready to roll up to Detroit because Ford has given us an inside look at its brand new 7.3 liter gas V8 pushrod engine. Now this is a truck engine designed for commercial vehicles and super duty F-250 type trucks. So it's a big robust engine as far as cubes go, almost 445 cubic inches, and it's really designed to replace the V10. Now I know it's a truck engine, but if you think about it, this thing screams engine swap. Iron block, small package, kind of like a Windsor. Um, it's got a nice set of cylinder heads on it with really cool parts, 60 millimeter cam bore, a really robust bottom end. So I think this thing can handle a lot of power, especially booster nitrous. So Ford offered us the chance to come take a look. We're gonna head up to Detroit, so let's go check it out. Afternoon. So Ford is the only manufacturer that designs, engineers, and builds its own engines and transmissions for commercial vehicles. You know, helping each of the powertrains be optimized for how it's calibrated in vehicle to give seamless function for all of our customers. And so the other benefit we get with this is if you think on the service side, you have a consistent service approach for all the range of vehicles that we uh, sell. So there's one, you know sure path for service, and that's through the Ford servicing dealers. You know, it's been more than 20 years since Ford introduced an all new gasoline heavy duty engine. You know, here today with the 7.3, you know, it's now the most powerful gasoline super duty engine ever. And this is gonna help take our gasoline towing and hauling capability to a new level. It starts with a cannon block architecture and that architecture is designed to bridge the gap between the smaller displacement gasoline engines that have been in the market and the high capacity turbo diesels. You know, the, the engine's really for the customers that, uh, you know, they need the strong towing, but not quite enough to step up to the turbo diesel with a higher investment. You know, it strikes the right balance with, you know, higher torque at low engine speeds than overhead cam engine normally delivers. And at the same time, that gives excellent pulling power in all the gears. And it's compatible from an F-250 Super Duty to the F-650 Medium Duty. This is a great advantage for our fleet customers. This greatly commonizes and simplifies the service of the engines for our large diverse fleets that we support. The 7.3 can also be converted to run on natural gas, so that helps mitigate the risk for rising fuel costs in the future. You know, the 7.3 was based on our you know, the design work was based on our deep knowledge of what the commercial customers need. You know, we've got years of experience with them. And they really, when they came to us, we're talking about accessible power for everyday usage, mechanical simplicity. They also wanted a compact package so it's easy to work on. You know, and above all, it's got to have long-term durability and it's got to bring them overall efficiency for their fleet. The good news is, that all of our retail customers really want the same things if you look at how our Super Duty customers use the vehicles. You know, since we showed the uh, 7.3 back in January, we've continued to drive forward on delivery on its capability and durability. Our Windsor engine plant, where we're gonna build these engines, is an all new plant, and so making sure everything's ready for production is a key step in the process of delivering an engine. Windsor has built hundreds of engines down their production lines. We consider them pre-production engines. Um, some we literally just take and recycle. Others go through full durability testing. And when we talk about durability testing, we expect our production engines to pass all the same durability tests that our hand-built prototypes could pass. So when we talk about the, our engine fatigue test where we exhaustively run the engine, the production engines routinely pass that. When you talk about like a uh, thermal shock test, our production engines pass it just like our prototypes could. The same with a global systems test that we run that really replicates how our uh, tough customers run their vehicles. And it's much more aligned with um, a vehicle usage profile rather than accelerated wear that our other tests uh, push the engine through. You know, today, when we introduced, I'm sorry, when we introduced the engine, we said it would be the most powerful engine in Super Duty to come out from the gasoline side. And today we're proud to announce a 7.3 gas engine Super Duty pickups will deliver best in class horsepower and torque. 
And so when you, we look at the engine that will go into the F250 and 350, so that's complete pickup trucks. We call them chassis cert engines. And the engine will be delivering 430 horsepower, 5,500 RPM, and 475 pound-feet at 4,000 RPM. So that's best in class for both those values. Um, our dyno certified engines, so those are the engines that go in our incomplete uh, chassis cabs. They go in vehicles up through F650 and 750, um, E-Series, and also we sell strip chassis that get turned into delivery vans and motorhomes. That engine will be rated at 468 pound-feet of torque at 3,900 RPM. It can make somewhere 350 horse at that speed. So very, very strong performance from the engine. Um, but along with these peak power numbers, this engine brings a wealth of gasoline fuel torque from very low RPM. So it's not just about the peak numbers, it's about what it can do across the RPM range. You know, today, we brought a few parts with us to kind of walk you through some of the durability uh, things that we've uh, talked about in the past, about how this engine's overbuilt. It's really a tough truck engine. Um, as we look at, you know, first up, this is a forged steel crankshaft. A um, couple things to set the stage for this though is this engine or this group of parts have come from two engines specifically that ran durability testing. Some of the parts came from what we call our engine fatigue test. That's a test where we run extensive amounts of time at peak torque and peak power, far longer, far harder than you could ever do in a real vehicle. And for those parts, the tests that were run represent more than our, the duty cycle our 90th percentile customers could have in our heaviest vehicle at full useful life. Okay, so this is truly what should be end of life uh, parts for a customer vehicle. Then the other parts are from an engine that we ran in dynamometer, then it might, was migrated into a vehicle. We continued with testing, running basically durability test after durability test. We just kept running it. Um, total time on the engine exceeded 3,200 hours. So you can get, take a guess that if you're running 24 hours a day, that's not something you got done in a few months. That is a very, very long, very hard test. Um, and those tests across the 3,200 hours were not only engine dynamometer based, but they were things like uh, Davis Dam, Max GCW, hot weather simulations, and all the way to some other things that we don't always think about every day when we talk about tough usage. Uh, the engine was exposed to very low temperatures in vehicle, doing very long sustained idles, because that's one of the things that emergency vehicles have to do in the northern states in Canada. And so, you know, as I started with the crankshaft, this crankshaft is actually out of the engine with 3,200 plus hours on it. And as you look at it, it's a forged steel crank, very close to what we've used in diesel engine, very large bearing diameters for both the mains and the uh, rod bearing. And if you come closer and look at it after the uh, presentation, what you're gonna see is there's virtually no visible wear on the crank after 3,200 hours of testing. So it starts to give you an idea of the bottom end in this engine is pretty special. You know, I mentioned the engine fatigue test that represents um, full useful life, 90th percentile customer for our heaviest vehicle. Well, this main bearing cap and bearing shell is out of that one of those engines after that full test has been completed. And at this point, it, when you look, you're gonna see virtually no wear on that main bearing shell. What that pretty much says is the bottom end of this engine, crank, bearings, you know, you'll look at it and go, this could run another full vehicle life simulation. That's how the overbuilt bottom end is. When you look at the piston and uh, rod assembly, this is actually out of the uh, engine with more than 3,200 hours. You'll see very little wear on the, the uh, rod bearing. Um, you'll see a little scuffing uh, bedding in on the, uh, the skirt coating. The rings have virtually no wear. And uh, that's quite unusual for gas engine with that kind of time on it. And what it really comes from is Ford invested in the better materials that we develop on our turbocharged engines. We put them in this engine because we want this engine to last a very long time even though it's naturally aspirated. So there's coatings on the rings from a turbocharged engine even though we're naturally aspirated. Bearing materials, rod design, everything comes from everything we've learned from our turbo diesels in our gas in our turbo gas engines. So very, very strong on durability. 
um, just as a comparator, these rod bearing shells are actually out of the engine that ran the engine fatigue test. So more time at peak power and peak torque than you would typically experience in a full life of our heaviest vehicles. And once again, you'll see some polishing, a couple minor scratches, but no significant wear. You know, there's a lot of talk about us um, reverting, you know, for this large engine, the cam and block. Uh, early on in January, I, I mentioned we did something special. We had some special tappets in it and other things for extreme durability that we expected our customers to want. And, you know, first up is a rocker arm. It's a uh, cast steel arm, not a stamping. And if you look closely at it, you'll see where it runs on the valve after over 3,000 hours. There's slight polishing, no real signs of wear. At the other end where the uh, push rod runs in the socket, um, once again, there's a little polishing, no significant wear. This is the push rod that was mated up to that particular rocker arm in the engine. There's polishing on the end, the ball where the contact is. Um, you know, there's been, so that's the inside of the engine. Once again, the materials help, but there's a couple of other things that are a little bit unique about this engine that help make the wear so low in these areas as an example. We run four specific tappets that run on the uh, camshaft. And we talked about the special uh, carbon nitride roller bearings we use, our competition does it. Well, something else that we did is we dramatically increased the oil flow to the overhead for the valve train beyond what's the industry norm for these tappets. And so when we send more oil up here, we're putting the oil directly to these wear surfaces. And then the rocker arm is actually designed such that the oil can come out of the top and there's channels that carry it over and carry oil at low engine speeds over to the valve interface. So fundamentally, you know, that helps with durability. So that, that's a little bit, there, there's some things beyond materials that are level of engineering that helps give us better durability than engines of the past can. The water pump is kind of a uh, simple external part on the engine. And the reason why we actually picked this part for here today is there's a couple subtle things in it. First off, the bearing that's actually in this is straight out of our turbo diesel 6.7. You know, the whys I'll get to in just a moment, but you'll also notice there's all this heavy ribbing. And so if you compare that to other uh, water pumps you're used to seeing in cam and block engines, you'll, what are they doing? Well, the reality is Ford sells a lot of engines for very tough usage where the first stop on the vehicle is actually an upfitter. And the upfitters add other content to the vehicle for special usages. And we know a number of these upfitters, those vehicles end up living off-road. So it's not like running down the nice smooth roads we have in Michigan. You know, we're talking, you know, very severe off-road usages. And for that, that's why we have the bearing with the extra capacity, the big ribs and the pump. It's not for your everyday um, commercial truck usage. It's for the higher percentile, really tough truck usages that the uh, 7.3 will see. You know, overall, I've been asked, well, you know, how long will this engine last? We know it's designed to go the distance for our Super Duty customers, our cur commercial truck users, and the high mileage they expect to run in the vehicles. Um, I've been challenged about, gee, can you figure out a V10 life? The reality is, as we look at the parts, you can see there's so little wear. We know it'll go way beyond expectations, but because the wear is so low, it's very hard to uh, predict just how long it will last. There's quite a number of these parts. You can look with your own eyes. You put them back in a new build, and it'll go a whole nother durability test. So, you know, a lot of people go, well, isn't that overbuilt? You know, from our point of view, we think this is really what our customers expect from a built Ford truck engine. 